Hi and welcome, this is David Bedford of Bright Moon Liverpool. I'm looking at key moments in Beatles history. I'm going to start with the day when the Beatles really first become a rock and roll group. It was the 10th of May 1960. And here they were, put together, really with the help of Alan Williams, who became the Beatles' first manager. They were at the Wyvern Club, which was one of the clubs that Alan owned, which would later become the Blue Angel. And they were doing an audition for Liverpool's first big rock and roll star, Billy Fury, born Ronnie Witchley in the Dingle. He was, in a way, one of Britain's first answers to Elvis. He looked great. He was a great singer. And his first album, The Sound of Fury, is now acknowledged as Britain's first rock and roll album. But not only did he sing, he wrote all the songs on it as well. So he was a hero, and that'll crop up in a moment. So Larry Palms was the promoter of the top acts in the country, like Billy Fury and Marty Wilde and Duffy Power. He was looking for a backing group to take Billy Fury on tour. So because Alan was helping to organise this, he got his friends, who were sort of messing around with what name they were going to be. They'd given up using the Quarrymen. Stuart Sutcliffe has suggested the Beatles. Now, they used different spellings, and the variations over the next three months started with Beatles with a double E, Beatles E-A, Beatles, B-E-A-T-A-L-S, Silver Beatles, other Silver Beatles spelling, Silver Beats, before they finally, as they're heading towards Hamburg, coming up with The Beatles, and that's how it stayed. But this day came about because just a few days earlier, there should have been a concert with Gene Vincent and Eddie Cochran, but of course Eddie Cochran had recently died in a car crash. So Gene Vincent starred as the big name at the Liverpool Stadium. But because Eddie Cochran wasn't there, Alan Williams got some Liverpool groups together, including Rory Storm and the Hurricanes with Ringo on drums. And they performed. Sitting in the audience were John Lennon, Paul McCartney, George Harrison and Stuart Sutcliffe. Afterwards, they went to Alan Williams and said, well, can't you do anything for us? And Alan said, well, I didn't realise you had a group. But of course, they didn't have a drummer. So the first thing Alan does is he gets a drummer for them. His name was Tommy Moore. And with the auditions coming up, he squeezes the Silver Beatles into the audition. Now, it's a series of photographs taken there, which are quite famous. The first one is with Johnny Hutchinson on drums. Now, Johnny Hutch was the drum with Cass and the Casanovas, later the Big Three, really acknowledged as the best drummer in Liverpool. As you can tell from the photograph, he's not happy at being there, sat in with a group he's never heard of, who've just been thrown together. The reason he was playing is that Tommy Moore, the Silver Beatles' new drummer, was late. Tommy then turns up and takes over, so then there's photos with Tommy Moore in the, uh, the drum seat. Obviously, we've got Stuart Sutcliffe on the left, so he was still, he looked cool, but he was still learning the part. And then you've got John Paul and George, Trying to look good in their matching outfits you know, with their great shoes. And at times, sometimes John's playing guitar, sometimes trying to sing. These photos were taken by a guy called Cheniston Rowland. Now, Cheniston actually became a good friend of mine. I got to know him and I got permission to use the photos in my book, The Fab 104, The Evolution of the Beatles. And this tells the story of an amazing day. And I got um, Chen's first-hand eyewitness testimony. He was the Jacaranda's official photographer, hence the reason he was here. And there's a lovely moment where we see this photo of Billy Fury and somebody handing a piece of paper over. That person is John Lennon. John did a little drawing of Billy. And he said to, to Cheniston Rowlands, he said, do you know Billy Fury? And he said, oh, yeah, yeah, I know him really well. Can you introduce me to him? So Chen takes John over to Billy Fury. And he says, here you go, Mr. Fury. That was the respect that he had. Here you are, Mr. Fury. Here's a little drawing that he'd done. This was a big moment for the Silver Beatles. Billy Fury had proved that a guy from the Dingle in Liverpool could make it big. Could they do the same thing? Now, a lot of people say the audition was a disaster. It wasn't a complete disaster. 
because on the back of their performance, they were sent on a tour with a guy called Johnny Gentle, another one of Larry Parnes' uh, stable. That tour has been described as a bit of a disaster, but we'll come to that soon because it wasn't such a disaster after all. But this was the day, 10th of May, 1960, when finally they become a rock and roll group. Silver Beatles, or whatever they were going to call themselves, would soon become the Beatles. But before they get to Hamburg, there's all kinds going on. Lots of different drummers, changes of names. We'll get to those as we, uh, we come to those dates. So remember this date. This was the date that the Beatles started. <laughs> 